This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 326, Bruce Lee Moment, and Move More, Die Less, by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Happy Monday, welcome back to another week of Optimal Health Daily. This is where I read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs on the web, kind of like an ongoing audiobook. Some of the authors we've read from in the past include Zen Habits, Nerd Fitness, Ben Greenfield, and more. And don't forget that we have four other podcasts where we narrate blogs for you. You can find them by searching for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this show. Now, yesterday was my wife's birthday, so a very happy belated birthday to my wife, Minnie. Now, after her birthday passes, that's when she starts to ramp up her Halloween decorating. So those of you longtime listeners know that I'm a big fan of the holidays, particularly Thanksgiving and especially Christmas. But my wife's holiday, the one she owns, is Halloween. And so right after her birthday, she starts really planning and decorating the house full of Halloween stuff. I own the Christmas holiday, she owns Halloween. And yes, The Nightmare Before Christmas is one of our favorite movies. I've been obsessed with Tim Burton and Danny Elfman since I was like 10. Now, it doesn't help that her sister is also really into Halloween this year. Those two, when they put their heads together, can spend a lot of money on Halloween decorations. Our house is starting to look a little bit obsessive. I think it's become a competition between them two. Who's gonna have the craziest Halloween house? I may have to encourage her to reel it back in just a little bit. But you know what? By doing all that decorating, at least we're moving more, which decreases our chances of dying. You like how I pulled that right back to today's episode? Let's jump in. Let's hear what Roger has to say about the Bruce Lee moment and moving more and dying less as we start optimizing your life. Bruce Lee Moment by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. Most of us have weak links that are contained in one area of our lives so as to not affect our daily lives. For instance, having horrible rhythm wouldn't hinder your efforts in becoming a movie critic, but if you dreamed of becoming the next Lord of the Dance, then that would be something you must fix before you could move forward. We've all heard that we are only as strong as our weakest link, but how many of us actually address it? Bruce Lee did. In December of 1964, a then 24-year-old Bruce Lee and another martial artist by the name of Wong Jack Man fought one another at Lee's Oakland, California Kung Fu School. What follows is Linda Lee Cadwells, who is Bruce Lee's widow, account of how that fight changed Bruce Lee's life from her book, Bruce Lee, The Only Man I Knew. Quote, The clash with Wong Jack Man metamorphosed his own personal expression of Kung Fu. Until this battle, he had largely been content to improvise and expand on his original Wing Chun style, but then he suddenly realized that although he had won comparatively easily, his performance had been neither crisp or efficient. The fight, he realized, ought to have ended within a few seconds of him striking the first blows, instead of which it had been dragged on for three minutes. In addition, at the end, Bruce had felt unusually winded, which proved to him he was far from perfect condition. So, he began to dissect the fight, analyzing where he had gone wrong and seeking to find ways where he could have improved his performance. It did not take him long to realize that the basis of his fighting art, the Wing Chun style, was insufficient. It laid too much stress on hand techniques, had very few kicking techniques, and was essentially partial. The Wong Jack Man fight also caused Bruce to intensify his training methods. From that date, he began to seek out more and more sophisticated and exhaustive training methods. I shall try to explain these in greater detail. But in general, the new forms of training meant that Bruce was always doing something, always training some part of his body or keeping it in condition. End quote. Many people go through life not addressing their weak points at all, letting them lag behind while continuing on with their life. But what if your weak link stood between you and your life's greatest ambitions? Bruce encountered such a challenge and succeeded with flying colors. Not only did he identify his weakest physical link, his overall conditioning, but he also came face to face with the limitations of his current way of approaching combat. The rest, as they say, is history. If it weren't for this fight that caused Bruce Lee to run smack dab into his weakest link, Jeet Kune Do may never have been created, and we may have been robbed of one of the most phenomenal human beings of our time. Move more, die less by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. 
A recent study out of Australia that can be found in the American Heart Association's journal Circulation has released some pretty disturbing and shocking findings. According to the study's lead author, David Dunstan, just one hour of face-to-face time with the television carries an 18% increased risk of death from cardiovascular disease and an 11% increased risk of death from all causes. The study also found that watching more than four hours of television a day increased the likelihood of death from all causes by 46%, and cardiovascular disease in particular by a face-slapping 80%. And here's the kicker. The link between television and death still persisted even after factoring in diet and exercise as variables. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. I don't have access to the entire study. I have no idea how well it was put together nor how valid these claims are. But I do know one thing. Sitting on your booty for upwards of 40 hours a week can't possibly be good for one's health. We're constantly being forced to do more and more with the same amount of time that we've always had, which usually means lots of sitting. When you think about it, most of us are simply moving from chair to chair throughout the day, from the chairs in our offices to the seats of our cars, right on home to log some more cushion time. The main takeaway point from this study isn't that television is the devil, but that we need to, as the great prophet Ned Flanders would say, stop being so gosh diddly darn inactive. As humans, we are designed for movement, and if we weren't, this is clearly backed up by endless hours of scientific research on the process of evolution, we would just be limbless, egg-shaped people with heads. Even then, we would be forced to roll around a lot to get where we were going and would probably be awesome breakdancers to boot. But I digress. Movement is crucial to our overall health, from the regulation of carbohydrate metabolism, the reduction of postural imbalances, muscle group, i.e. hamstring inflexibility, and an entire host of other benefits that we may not even be aware of yet. Personal story time. I'm what you would call a FBJ, Facebook junkie for those not in the know of my own ridiculous in-head language to the point where if Facebook were crack and they were casting for a new Jack City remake, I'd be their pookie. I took the leap and deactivated it for a couple of months, which drastically reduced my internet sitting time. So now all of a sudden, I have more time for walks, rock climbing, archery, and moto surfing. So here is my challenge to you. Take a look at your life and identify one cheek-to-cushion vice of yours. After doing that, explore your options and see how you can turn it into something more active, or better yet, Substitute an hour of that activity out for something more movement-based. For instance, if you like watching television, at the very least, stand up and move around every now and then while doing so. An even more awesome idea is to do some jumping jacks, push-ups, or a wide variety of other exercises during the commercial breaks. Although my favorite is to act out a scene from the movie you're watching. Enter the Dragon, Weekend at Bernie's, and Flash Dance are particularly dope. If you take the findings of this study to its extreme conclusion, Between American Idol, YouTube, and World of Warcraft, we're all gonna die. But it doesn't have to be that way at all. As long as you have at least one functioning limb, there are always options for movement, even during a busy work schedule. Take, for instance, my friend Josie, who, instead of sitting down all day while on the job, took to the stairwell throughout the day to repeatedly show them who the boss was. So that's it. Get out there and get moving. You just listened to the posts titled Bruce Lee Moment and Move More, Die Less by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. Personally, I find it difficult to work on my weakest link. It's like I have to admit that I have a weak link somewhere. Sometimes I have to be told that I look out of proportion, which I've shared with you before many times, or I won't do anything at all. But if you can get to that point where you can admit you have a weak link and you start working on it, even just working on it one time, makes you feel so proud and you can carry that momentum into hopefully turning that weak link into a strength. Now, with regards to move more, die less, I actually did see this article. What I wanna say is that correlation does not mean causation, meaning if we say longer hours of television watching increases chance of death, yes, those two variables, those two things may seem to be related, but we need to look at a bunch of other factors to really know, does more sitting, does more TV watching actually increase risk of death? It's really hard to say with studies like these. But as Roger mentioned, the core conclusions of the study are good ones. If we can get up and move more, we're gonna have lower rates of disease. And there are many other studies that have found the same to be true. 
What I would say is, it's not just necessarily about getting up and standing, but it's getting up, standing, and then moving. We've got to move those limbs. And as Roger mentioned, if you like TV, I'm a big fan of TV. I like watching baseball and football on TV, but those are like three-hour games. And right now it's playoff time for baseball and football seasons in, so I could sit for six hours in front of the tube. Thankfully, I don't do that. But what you'd want to do is go ahead and enjoy your TV, but get up during commercials and start moving around. Walk in place. As Roger mentioned, do jumping jacks or do invisible jump rope, which I've talked about before, or do some sit-ups or push-ups. It doesn't even have to be for the entire commercial break. But if you do it often enough, it'll become a habit. And before you know it, you might actually start to see some gains. It doesn't take much. Just think consistency. Anytime you watch TV, just think, hey, when's the next time I'm gonna get up? Before I go one last time, don't forget that we have four other shows where we narrate blogs for you, covering personal development, money, business, and relationships. Just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this to find them. That's it for Monday's episode. I hope you have a great start to your week. I'll be back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, And together, we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.